This week we will be looking at another new structure of essay, looking at what's called a cause and effect essay. And um, in research, this can be an important pattern or tool to know how to use. And so what we're going to go through here in uh, the PowerPoint today is we'll just first discuss what you know, a cause effect essay is, what it does. We'll take a look at um, how to brainstorm and how to use organizers as a way to really help you get a better handle on the structure of the paper that you're going to be writing. And then in the organization, um, we'll look at how to uh, set up uh, a basic five paragraph essay for this and then how to even work sort of beyond just having an intro, a conclusion, three examples, that idea. Um, then I want to talk about thesis statements for the cause and effect essay, what it needs to include, give you some examples of what that should look like, and then finally, uh, what do you put into the body? How do you establish or prove this cause-effect relationship that you are going to be discussing? So to begin with, we're going to talk about well, what is a cause and effect essay, and does that mean that you have to explain everything that has you know, led into um, an effect, or do you have to look at every possible uh, effect from a certain cause? Uh, and the answer to that is no, you don't have to look at everything. You want to be a little bit more focused. So the idea of a cause and effect essay is that you're trying to figure out the relationship. Uh, if you see a car that is in the ditch, well, that's probably the effect of many different causes. There may have been ice on the roads. Um, there may have been faulty brakes on the car. Uh, there may have been a driver asleep at the wheel. Or there may have been all three of those things that work together as causes to create the effect of the car in the ditch. So your goal in writing a cause and effect essay is really trying to trace back and identify um, either some of those really important causes or um, maybe working the other way, starting with the car in the ditch as a cause and then thinking, well, what are going to be the effects of this? What's going to happen because this car went in the ditch? The you know, is the person going to have insurance rates that go up? Is there going to be an accident report? Are there injuries? Okay, so we might look that way. So when when I say cause effect essay, uh, you're actually writing one or the other. You're not necessarily going to be writing about both of those things or all of those things. So if you choose to focus on causes, a cause essay, you're going to start with um, an event and then explain what caused that event. Example, my car crash. If you are writing an effect essay, you are going to start with the event and then look at the effects of that event, what happened after the car crash. Okay, So causes are what come before and the effects are what come after. And it's good to keep that clear in your mind. So uh, I've been talking about an event. I've been talking about a car crash. You might be looking at the causes of maybe a certain situation. You know, what is what are the causes for the uh, current budget deficit? Okay, that might be a situation or a specific problem. What are the causes for the lack of sustainable fuels? you know, something to that effect. So it's not just, it doesn't have to be just like a big event. It can be uh, different situations, problems, or, or issues. Okay, so you're going to focus on either explaining what has created this situation, or you're going to start with the situation, start with the problem. We have a huge budget deficit. What does that mean to the to the world or you know, or to individuals in the country what are the effects of that and it's really important that you try to stay focused on one or the other it, it just makes your essay much more manageable okay now sometimes to contradict what i just told you sometimes both causes and effects can be discussed this is a much more difficult process and it it works only in some very specific situations where you have sort of a, a chain of events or a domino effect happening that you're trying to explain. And you're trying to really sort through the whole chain reaction of things that have, have occurred. Okay, 
you need to offer proof for the relationship. Just because something happens um, chronologically before something else does not mean that it's a cause. Okay, so we don't want to ref we don't want to confuse time relationship with actual cause effect relationship. If I say I ate breakfast because I woke up, okay, that's a, a chronology. You know, I, I usually, yes, you do have to wake up in the morning before you can eat breakfast, but waking up isn't what makes you want to eat breakfast. It doesn't cause the eating of the breakfast. If you say I ate breakfast because I was hungry, now you have a cause relationship. The hunger is what drove you to deciding to eat breakfast. Okay, so it's important that you are able to look at the situation clearly and to find research to support the idea that yes, one event did in fact lead into the next event. Okay, so now we're going to look at brainstorming and discuss um, a really great graphic organizer and outlining tool that I have found. So to get started, you need an appropriate type of topic. And remember, this does need to relate to the topic you have been researching throughout this semester. So whether you're looking at Social Security or organ donation or uh, legalizing prostitution or uh, global terrorism, you need to stick with that topic in this cause effect essay. Uh, so if you can look at things like um, a social phenomena. I, I've had students write about school violence. Uh, if you're writing about anything related to like the justice system, you might look at you know growing uh, numbers of inmates. You might look at um, Gosh, I'm trying to think of things off the top of my head here for you. You might look at uh, juveniles being tried as adults as a social phenomenon. What's the cause of that or what's the effect of that? You might look at trends, whether they be social trends, political trends, you know, anything like that would work. You might look at a specific piece of legislation. What led to that legislation? Uh, I'm thinking, knowing I have students who have written about terrorism, uh, the Patriot Act might be a piece of legislation. You might look at what caused that legislation to be written and to be passed, or you might look at what have been the effects since that legislation passed. And then, of course, there's always the idea of the event. You could look at a specific event and what what led to the event or what has um, been the result or the effect of that event. You want to decide and really be clear in your own mind, which am I looking for? Am I looking, say for example, we take the 9-11 terrorist attacks. Are you looking at the causes, Okay, what led up to it, and if so, you stop at that date? Or are you looking at the effects of the event, in which case you start at that date and then move to the present time? Okay, You want to think about one or the other. You want to evaluate the relationship that you build, um, making sure that you can establish that there is a relationship, that you know the 9/11 attack did cause certain things to happen, or that um, certain policies in the past were definitely directly related and therefore causes of the 9/11 effect. So again, be aware of assuming chronology. And, and understanding that chronology does not necessarily prove a cause relationship. And then you need to look at gathering evidence um, using research that you've already conducted and continuing to add to your collection of articles and websites and information about this topic that you are becoming an expert on. So a tool that 